Hi, I'm Bob Whiten. I'm the product manager for Hilco, and I'll be your instructor for this series. Now, before we get into the, each specific task of all these hand tools, we'll start with a general overview. And we'll start with pliers, optical pliers, that are actually designed uh, with a specific task in mind, um, such as a plier that's designed for uh, making adjustments on the pad arms, or an axis aligning plier that is used to change the axis of a lens, an angling plier which helps change the pantoscopic angle for the patient, and an eye wire shaper plier, which is designed to shape eye wires if the bevel of the lens is not in the groove of the eye wire. Uh, and then there are specialty tools, such as a shaper plier, which uh, can actually decrease the DBL, the distance between the lenses on particular frames, and screw punching tools. Uh, in another category, there are optical tools that are used for uh, general adjusting. Uh, they're not made for any specific task. Many of them have protective nylon jaws on them so that they do not mark the frame finish. Some have one nylon jaw on them. Typically it goes on the front of the frame so it doesn't mark uh, a viewing area of the frame. Or some of them have a double nylon protection for frames that uh, you can get this plier into to make an adjustment without ruining the finish or marking the finish on the front or the back. And then general snipe nose pliers, uh, long delicate snipe nose or short chain nose type pliers to make adjustments. Another category of pliers are cutting pliers. And typically cutting pliers come in two styles, a side cutting plier and a top cutting chapelle cutting plier. And we'll talk about screwdrivers for a moment. And there are many different types of screwdrivers in the optical industry. Uh, you have the old standard screwdriver that's been around for many, many years with an aluminum shaft and a knurled handle. An upgrade to the aluminum screwdriver is the brass screwdriver, which has a wider base area, uh, has a heavier feel to it, possibly for somebody who has a, a larger hand and has trouble gripping the smaller shaft of the aluminum screwdriver. Uh, there are pickup screwdrivers, which actually aid in screw insertion. And there's high-tech screwdrivers, such as the Ergo driver here, which can actually be shaped to form for a right-handed person a left-handed person, or one of my favorites is the pistol grip. So you can get a lot of torque on that screw to, to help either insert it or to back it out. Take this time to talk about optical wrenches for a moment. And I have a complete set of optical wrenches here. And I highly recommend having a complete set. Uh, certainly, just about every optical shop will have the standard nut driver that uh, drives nuts onto lens screws. Um, but typically you'll find uh, that you'll run into certain types of nuts like star nuts or hex nuts that that particular wrench does not cover. So to save yourself a lot of aggravation, to have the set of the five wrench wrenches really makes a lot of sense. It saves you a lot of time. Next we're going to talk about four-point alignment, which is a great baseline to use to prep frames for your frame board or basically before you dispense the frame to the patient and make those final uh, adjustments to fit your patient personally. Uh, the four-point alignment, I have two frames here. The first one I'm going to show uh, is in perfect alignment. And the four-point alignment is you have two points of contact on your table mat or your table surface on the eye wires and then two points also on the temple tips. And some opticians will turn them upside down. You get a three-point contact that is just about perfect for the frame board or just getting ready to fit your patient uh, with a personal fit. The next frame I'm going to bring in so we can talk about how to adjust these frames is something that I've doctored up a little bit. It uh, is really out of alignment. The first thing that you should look at is pick up the frame and look down towards the eye wires to make sure that they're aligned. And you can see that this frame is not aligned at all. And this adjustment can be basically made with your fingers simply by twisting the bridge area to get them to have a nice curve to them, a nice even curve. But once we've got that, that would, that's step number one. Now as we lay it on the mat, uh, the next thing that I would look at is that we have end pieces that have been turned outward and the temples have been bent in to make the frames tighter for the patient. That's not a proper adjustment. Uh, some opticians will call that the ice tong effect 
where it's, the contact is made by the mastoid and it gets very uncomfortable for the patient. So the first thing I'm going to do to correct the temples is I'm going to bring the end pieces in so that they're in a good 90 degree angle. And I'm going to do that using uh, a nylon jaw plier with a rounded end because of the configuration of this frame. It has a rounded inside corner. So this plier will fit nicely in there. There's also a flat jaw if need be. And all we will do is just twist that inward so that the end piece is at about a 90 degree angle. Okay, that looks good. And then we will do the other side, flip it around. Okay, notice the nylon jaw on the outside protecting the frame finish. Bring that inward. Good. Okay, and it, but you can see that we still have a few adjustments to go here before we have uh, good four-point alignment. Now the next thing is, is because the temples are bowed in, uh, we need to straighten those out. And depending on the frame style, sometimes you can make that adjustment with your fingers. A little at a time, just bending that temple back into shape. Okay, we've got that straight. Or if the, uh, the stock wire that's used on the frame, or the frame design, uh, has a thicker wire, I recommend using a double-sided nylon. Once again, it it's a plier that has very good um, torque on it, a shorter handle. We can very easily bend heavier metals with it. We straighten that out. And we're almost there. We've got the temples at the angle that we want, but we still don't have four-point contact. And the reason being is one of the temples' pantoscopic angle is off. The pantoscopic angle is the degree of the temples uh, in correlation with the frame front. We have, to, we have to change one of those. And to prep it for the frame board um, and prep it prior to customized fitting for your patient, we're going to get it to the four-point contact. And I'm going to do that by using an angling plier. Uh, this Ergo Pro angling plier uh, has four holes in the jaw. The holes are actually uh, drilled into the jaw because you're going to grip the screw that's inserted into the hinge to change that angle. Um, this one, this jaw is actually designed in a symmetrical style so no, that no matter how you pick it up it's going to be in the correct position for use. So we will take that, get it right over the screw, okay, and then just Tilt downward a little bit, a little too far. I'm just going to tweak that upward. There. And there we have it. Now the last adjustment we need to make is to take the tips off the lenses. Uh, after we've done some major adjusting to it, uh, it could throw the temples off so that the end of the tip is actually touching one of the lenses which can cause it to scratch, especially this should be done uh, when you're dispensing the frame to your patient. Uh, after a period of time, the lenses will become scratched. And it's a pretty simple adjustment, once again made with the angling plier. Get that in position, twist it downward, just a little bit more. Okay. And now the tip is actually hitting the eye wire of the frame and not the lenses. So you've protected the lenses. And we still have our four point contact. The job is complete. Now in changing the pantoscopic angle to fit your customer's needs, I recommend using two pliers in correlation with each other. And the reason for that is uh, typically, many frame designs uh, will have the closing barrels soldered onto the end piece. So you have a screw going through the closing barrels, and there's a split there. If I were to just take the angling plier and try to make my adjustment, there's a real risk of splitting that screw in half, and now you have a, a real problem on your hands. So I will use uh, a nylon plier with a flat jaw, and this is going to brace the closing barrels for me. And how I do that is, I use the nylon on the front so I don't mark the frame. Use the metal jaw on the back. Now I'm bracing that closing barrel and the screw inside of it so there's no, no risk really of breaking that screw. And then using my angling plier, get it down over the hardware on the hinge. And then you can change your pantoscopic angle either upward or downward depending on your patient's needs.
Now another typical adjustment that needs to be done in fitting your patient is changing the skull bend so that you have a good curve behind the ear and it's not irritating your customer. Um, some people can do that by simply using their fingers and making the adjustment. But with today's frame styles turning more towards stainless steel or titanium, it gets more and more difficult to do that. Uh, there, are a, there is a plier that is available um, that can help you change that skull bend simply by placing the plier over the skull bend and just curling it a bit more. You can straighten it out and make the proper adjustment. And I recommend doing a little at a time and fitting your patient uh, time and time again, making minor adjustments to it. You don't want to overextend the adjustment. Um, the other type of skull adjustment that you would have to make would be on the mastoid bend. And that's the little curl. Um, usually temple tips will have a little flare outward, so they're not digging into uh, the patient's head. And sometimes you have to extend those a little bit further. And this tool will also help you do that. It's a shaper plier that can help shape both the skull and the mastoid bends. Okay, we can flare that out a little bit more. And you can see the difference between the stock bend and then the customized bend. The next adjustment we're going to work on is a pad arm adjustment. And we're going to use a pad arm adjusting plier. Uh, this particular design, the Ergo Pro, is designed to fit both types of assemblies, the screw type and the push-on type assembly of pad arm. Uh, it's also designed with a scalloped jaw so that when you get in tight on a lens, maybe you have a high minus lens in there and it's a little thick and you, you're getting close to the edge of the lens. So it's scalloped down so there is no risk of damaging the lens. It also has a slightly longer handle because a pad arm adjustment is basically a feel type of adjustment. It's not uh, a heavy adjustment like, in, like an end piece or on the pantoscopic angle. So we can feel exactly how much we're moving that guard arm because it's usually a very minor adjustment. Especially on the tilting of the pad to get the best surface contact on the patient's nose. Uh, maybe they come back to the practice and they have an irritation, a redness. There's a red line on their nose. Uh, that's typically because the pad doesn't have the optimized pad surface contact on the patient's bridge. And you can just simply grab the pad arm and make your adjustment either inward or outward to optimize that surface contact. The other type of adjustment that you can make with this plier is to raise or lower the, where the pad is going to seat or where it's uh, located in correlation with the lenses. That lifts or lowers the glasses. And you, I'm going to raise this right pad arm for an example. And you simply bend it upward and downward. Okay, And I've raised that pad in correlation with the other one approximately three to four millimeters. Now another plier that you can use to adjust the guard arms up or down is the snipe nose. Uh, some opticians use this. I really don't recommend it. Uh, definitely recommend using the plier that was designed for that specific task. And the reason for that is if you're using the snipe nose to get into the guard arm to change that height, you're risking a couple of things, flaking the plating of the frame as well as marking the guard arm. Now if you're working on a very expensive frame, uh, you'd want to be very, very careful not to mark it in any way. So I don't recommend using the snipe nose some people do use it. Definitely recommend using the uh, plier that uh, was designed for that specific task, which is the pad arm adjusting plier. If there's a need to decrease the bridge length or to decrease the distance between the lenses, you can do that by using a shaper plier. And we used this a little earlier uh, to show how to aid in bending the skull bend and the mastoid bend, but the plier was actually designed to uh, reduce the DBL of frames. And it's designed with two protective pins or non-marking pins that you're going to put on the frame front. And this round jaw 